This video will show you how to wire and install the MultiWave ECS Plus system, which is 80 amp and has an 8 breaker base. Intermatic's MultiWave pool and spa automation systems are perfect for retrofit or new construction. Let us know if you find this video helpful by giving us a thumbs up at the end. Well, we've mounted the PE30000 load center. Now, before beginning any wiring, be sure to turn off the power at its source. The load center has two openings for mechanisms, eight breaker knockouts, four bottom knockouts for switches or receptacles, and one side knockout. Breakers are sold separately, so check the inside front panel for a list of acceptable types. Remove the dead front on the panel to install the multi-wave receiver. The receiver comes shipped attached to a small enclosure box. Unscrew the nut and gasket to remove the receiver. Mount the receiver to the top right knockout using the nut and gasket to keep the unit rain tight. Now open the door on the receiver and make sure the selector switch is in the correct position. The receiver is factory set for 240 volt operation. Refer to the installation manual for 120 volt. Okay, now we can wire to the breaker. One side of the double pole breaker goes to terminal one. The other side goes to terminal two. This will supply power to circuits 1 and 2 on the PE653 receiver. Circuits 3, 4, and 5 will be explained in future videos. We've snapped in the expansion module, which allows you to control two bodies of water. Connect the black and red wires from the module directly to a constant 240 volt power source. Now remove the top plate from the expansion module to establish the communication line to the receiver. Run the wiring from the RS-485 terminal on the module through the raceway, since this is low voltage. The connectors are labeled A and B. The A terminal connects to the outside, or right, terminal of the receiver. The B terminal connects to the inside, or left, terminal of the receiver. It's important to note that these connections are polarity sensitive. So now we can wire the water temperature sensor. Make sure the location for the probe is after the filter, but before the inlet to the heater. Drill a 3 8 inch hole and insert the water sensor probe. Secure it with the provided hose clamp. Make sure the probe's O-ring is in place. Run the sensor wires to the receiver and insert both wires to the middle terminals on the 6-pin terminal block. These are not polarity sensitive. The air temperature sensor is for the freeze control feature. Insert the sensor into the provided bracket and mount onto a piece of conduit. It needs to be in a position where it will read accurately, so do not put it close to a pump motor. Now, to run the wire to the receiver, cut the plastic connector off and insert the wires into the two left terminals next to the water sensor. These are not polarity sensitive. Follow the same process to connect a solar sensor. Only use the two terminals to the right. Positioning of the sensor should be per the solar heating system supplier. When all the sensors are connected, route the wires out through the guides located on the back of the receiver. Make sure they're held in place within the guides. Otherwise, the wires may interfere with the connection of the antenna and affect communications between the remote and the receiver. Punch out the wire slots on the cap to ensure a moisture tight fit. So now that everything is connected, tighten up all of your components to keep them safe from the elements and fasten the dead front to the load center. Now with the basic components of the multi-wave system installed, you're ready to connect pumps, lights, heaters, and more. Need help configuring your pool and spa controls? For customized product recommendations and wiring diagrams at your fingertips, visit checkfrank.com. Well, thanks for watching today's iTip. You can post comments or ask a question below. Please like it and click on the red button to become a subscriber.